This is your three-minute radiation fallout guide for the U.S. Civil defense is an effort to protect the citizens of a state from military attack. It uses the principles of emergency operations, prevention, mitigation, preparation, response, or emergency evacuation and recovery. The civil defense program in the U.S. was disbanded in the 70s and replaced with FEMA and DHS. What many people don't realize is that we have been getting radioactive fallout from Fukushima in the U.S. for over a year. This equates to a low-level nuclear attack that is ongoing. Because the mentioned agencies have not been involved in informing the American people of this threat, it is now up to us to protect ourselves and protect each other. Here are some of the ways people in the U.S. can assess the risk of fallout by checking weather patterns and other indicators. The number one indicator of high radiation is, of course, with a Geiger counter. As they are somewhat pricey, you may want to borrow a friend's or go in on one with friends or neighbors to see for yourself that we are detecting fallout. There are several crowdsourced data sites online, and EPA RadNet monitors can be found online as well. However, they are government-run and are somewhat suspicious for accurate readings. Number two, precipitation. Rain, hail, and snow all bring radioactive particles down to the ground from our atmosphere. Some are in the jet stream, most are in the tropopause, according to Lorraine Murray, a leading atmospheric particle expert. Where all three of these things exist together, jet stream, tropopause, and precipitation, you may consider when downwind of Japan is being in a high-risk area. Number three, the infamous TEPCO and JNN cameras. I realize that we are working backwards, but eventually you end up at the source of the emissions. Anytime a lot of steam or smoke is seen on the TEPCO cameras, the resulting radiation will be in the tropopause in the days following the event. Hawaii, Alaska, and the numerous cities and beaches on the west coast will be at higher risk depending on which way the wind blows. The soonest it can reach Hawaii and Alaska is two days. The west coast proper is generally five days. At the same time you suspect fallout is coming, keep a close eye on the Geiger readings in the area. When in doubt, avoid precipitation as much as possible. Treat as high risk if you don't know. You can never be too careful with radiation, especially the kind that comes out of melted down nuclear reactors. That kind is a thousand times worse than sources that occur naturally, like gamma radiation from the sun. Get informed and live as healthy as possible. Further links to weather resources can be found under this video or at FukushimaFacts.com. This message has been brought to you by Radchik and the Orion Talk Radio Network. We care about you because your government doesn't. Stay safe.